basically we're going to cover the LT230T transfer box in these tutorials. So jumping straight in, we're looking at the front housing here, or output housing. You have the diff lock selector here, and you move the selector one way, it engages, you move it the other way, it disengages. Easy as that. You know how it operates in the cab, but this thing gets a bit stiff from time to time. Now it could well be the linkages or it could be the barrel or the uh, spindle in the housing just here that I'm moving about. It can be stripped out by undoing this nut, taking the lever off, cleaning it out. When you're engaging you can see the lever pushes the rod, okay, pushes it back the other way. That's no problem there. Um, spring loaded as well. This is the selector fork. Right, so on top of the selector fork as well, if I push this forward, hang on, let's just do this with a screwdriver, you'll see that we also have the diff lock warning lamp switch. So when the diff lock is not engaged, it is not making contact and sending a current to the warning lamp. Okay, so on top of the output housing, or the front output housing, little breather here, this is your high-low selector. Okay, six bolts hold it down onto the housing, and here is the earth for the diff lock switch. Right, so you can lift that out like so. And basically, again, you have a lever here which engages um, a rod. Okay, that fits in a slot. This can get very stiff as well, and this one actually is. It's been sitting around a while, doesn't move very well. Can be stripped out and uh, re-lubricated. Okay, so this needs to be actually taken off. If you're going to take the front housing off, and you also need to take the diff lock light out, which I haven't shown here. Fairly simple to strip off the uh, main part of the casing. And underneath we have the uh, diff and its bearing. And this front housing is a support. There's the carry or the bearing land for that. Right, well we're going to put this back on here because we need to support the output gears with uh, this housing first. Okay, we're not actually going to overhaul that. This is your rear um, output shaft. And you can see again it's easily stripped out. If you look in there, you can see your speedo drive, the blue part. The shaft turns and turns the smaller blue gear, like so. The only issue you get in this housing is possibly the bearing or the speedo drive. In the PTO housing, you have dog teeth on the back of the input gearing. If you had a PTO fitted, then you could uh, select it and lock it onto these teeth. There's an oil feed up the top here. This is on the PTO housing, and it's covered. So we have here a uh, bearing support carrier. So once this is popped out, you'll see this supports the bearing for the input gear. Okay, so this is the input gear. On the other side, you have a seal which runs on the boss of the main shaft of the gearbox. Now, if you have seen our video about the problem that the LT77 has, then um, you'll know that the splines wear on this input shaft actually to the point where it can cause a loss of drive okay so our tutorial is about replacing this now you can see the uh, splines here are just about gone reason for this is because of lack of oil or lack of lubrication there's no oil drilling hole in this gear whereas in the new one that we're going to be fitting has an oil drilling and we're basically replacing this with some bearings and doing a couple of other repairs. All in good time. So anyway, carrying on. Right, so we're going to remove the sump here and uh, these are uh, M8 bolts. And have a look at the gearing in here. Maybe some of you have already seen some of the gearing. Um, basically you have input, you have intermediate gears and then you have your output which are selectable either high or low. Okay, so I'm pointing at the selector here, and this is basically a synchro, and it slips over dog teeth. Right, we'll have a look at this later on in uh, further tutorials, but not in when we're doing the input shaft. Okay, this is the intermediate gears, and it has uh, two uh, taper roller bearings, and it also has, in the middle here, it has a collapsible spacer, right? This is why the gearbox is 230T. The T denotes a taper roller bearings. Now in the center here you can see this sludge. This is responsible for uh, component damage, so we need to check the bearings on this one. Here is a shaft and basically the intermediate gear runs on it. Other end we have a nut on the end which is staked and we also have a collar which stops it from spinning. Okay. Now this is easily knocked out once the nut has been taken off. 
and it needs tapping out very gently and not damaging the threads. Once this shaft is out we can then lift away the intermediate gears. They are a bit fiddly to get out of the casing um, to remove them and they're even worse at trying to get back in this we need a little bit of an assistance of some rope. Right so in the following videos what we're going to be doing is replacing the bearings on the intermediate gear uh, because they're basically they're worn out. We're also going to replace the uh, input shaft and fit a set of new bearings to it. We'll show you exactly where the uh, shims are for the input bearing. We'll also uh, get around to showing you a couple of uh, tricks and tips so that you can get the gearing and the shafts in properly because this is actually uh, a bit tricky. Bearings are preloaded on this uh, transfer box so we need a way of checking it. We'll show you that. Also we'll uh, show you what could possibly be the reason for leaky sumps. So stay tuned.